to the nations. Imposing. When they come down to here, the Caribbean countries, and you got to understand, when I heard that Jamaica is considering passing homosexual laws in Jamaica, then I realized that it has already what hit. They can have gay parades in Jamaica, and there was a time that could not have happened. And the Prime Minister of Jamaica now, because of pressure from UN, Amnesty International, people of the earth. They said they were going to use food and other means to do it. And believe it or not, they are promoting this gay agenda themselves too. Believe it or not. So when you go to the book of Revelation, you will see. Israel will become as Sodom and Egypt, the Bible tells you. So even in what they call a democracy in Israel or the Israelis, even they themselves are going to have the problem too. So there was a particular Jew who wanted to do some filming. And he went down to the Dead Sea region. He asked all the men and all the women. And this was a great um, group of people in terms of large number. He asked all of them to remove their clothes. Including their underwears. And then tell them to do whatever. And they took pictures of all of that. Right in God's land. So you and I have to understand that you got to stand firmly now for what you believe. Churches are falling apart because of immorality. Churches are falling apart because many times their leaders are not standing up either. They themselves fall prey to adultery. They fall prey to homosexuality. All these things they fall prey to. And you got to understand what you are not seeing sometimes is that there is an undercurrent that is working. Praise ye the Lord somebody. And it would appears as if they are winning. But I say to you today. God only make it seem that way. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise ye the Lord. If he doesn't then his word is not going to come to pass. Are you hearing me? But you got to see that the Bible tells you that. These things would have happened in the body of Christ. Also. Hallelujah somebody. And then you wonder. And you said. And everybody going to cry out because they are looking for whatever. You got to understand, my friend, that Satan has agents in every church. You look at somebody and you think that everybody was supposed to be walking with God and everybody going to do this and that. Well, Jesus already tells you it's not going to happen. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So we are looking now at the church moving now to what? We call Laodicean times. See? The final setting of the church. Big slide. Are you in Second Peter? Glory to God somebody. Chapter 1. We're going to start from verse 12. And so Peter was about to leave. Because his time came to die. And so as an apostle for Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord instructed him. To write to the church. Within this particular book. It is evident that he was writing to a church. That he knows Paul had instructed them to. He said that Paul the things that he wrote. To the churches. They are difficult to understand. And just like our men have twisted other scriptures, even so they twist what he said to their own destruction. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. And you got to understand now we are people reinterpreting now the scripture for us. They want to remove. Men must not lie with men or men, mankind must lie, lie with mankind as they lie with womankind. They want to remove it from the Bible. Hallelujah, somebody. So many of them, they are trying to get people now to revise it to reflect what they call their times. But you got to understand, the Bible said, seek the whole path. Praise ye the Lord. Glory to God. God doesn't have any new path. 
God does new things, but the path remains the same. It's either you believe in Jesus, believe in the resurrection, praise ye the Lord, believe in his blood, believe in the... Anybody else? Okay. And I, and it, praise ye the Lord, somebody. Because God doesn't look for people. He doesn't look for people to agree with how they live. He looked for people who agree with how he said that they should live. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise, somebody. So Peter going away and he, by the unction of the Holy Ghost, Verse 12, he said, Wherefore, I will not be negligent or careless to put you always in remembrance of these things, though he know them, and be established in the present truth, or in the truth that you already know. Praise ye the Lord. So some people are moving away from the truth they already know. Are you with me? I am what it is. The Lord. We, we have seen a, a shift in You have your, your pants over your shoes and now it's
God has black and white. The one who get trapped in a body that they shouldn't have. These are groups now. Transvestite. See? What you might call envy other people. Because they don't have breasts, they want tutu. Envy the women with dresses. homosexual church in Russia where men and women can come. They open Bible preaching like they're real preachers. All sort of stuff happening in the world. Are you understanding that? And then start from one place, it goes to another and so on. And everybody telling you Jesus loves you. Everybody telling you there's nothing wrong with your lifestyle. Everybody's telling you that. But I say like the word of God. If they don't what, repent, they're going straight to hell. And let me tell you, and this is only my belief, a transvestite, I don't see any redemption for them. That's total rebellion against God. Are you understanding that? Because you went and you cut off breasts, or you removed whatever would identify you as a male or as a female, because you are rebelling against God. Why did you make me like this? So Satan then is a new in the earth. God, you have to pray. Stir me up, Lord.
Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Finally. Literally speaking, if God was to just turn the earth one degree. wants to turn back this earth one degree you would see and I mean if he didn't do the miracle he just turned it you would see the He is the true God. There is no man that can challenge God and win. Praise the Lord. And it doesn't matter how you see governments are going and how they turn. All God got to do is just withhold rain from their country and they can't even survive. Much less if he start to throw down stars down here. Which he's going to do in Revelation. Praise the Lord somebody. So Peter is saying I am imploring you verse 16 for he have not followed cunning um, devised fables when we know when we sorry when he we made known unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty now he's been personal testimony now that he saw the glory of the lord understand that he's going to come he saw it as a man he wasn't repeating a vision he went up into the mountain and he saw it. Literally, Christ transformed before him just like that. And he saw the glory cloud and he heard the voice. Praise ye the Lord. So he said, I'm not telling you fables. I'm telling you something that I see with my own eyes and something that I've experienced. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. You got to get an experience of God. Hallelujah. Some of you children in here, you grow up and you go to college, they're going to tell you there is no God. And they're going to tell you all sort of stuff. And you got to understand without an experience of Almighty God, you will not even know the truth. But you got to understand the things that you learn, you must hold them dear to your heart. I don't know about some of you, but when I was going to college, you had a particular teacher, professor from he hailed from St. Vincent, lived in Jamaica. And we were doing like sociology and philosophy. And when he comes, he's always on God's case. Until one day, I had to start talking. Right? So we get in philosophical arguments and all of that. 
You got to understand, when God starts talking through you, using their own philosophy, sometimes they have nothing else to say. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. And you got to see what they're telling you, that there is no God. You are the one who made life what it is. And if you want it this way, you can make it that way. The truth of the matter is that it is not in man even to order his own steps. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now listen to what he tells you here. Verse 17, he tells you, For he received from God the Father, that's Jesus Christ, honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Which means, he is God's chosen one. Praise thee the Lord somebody. 18. 7. We heard. When we were with him. In the holy mount of transfiguration. We have also. Notice now. A sure word. Say the word Prophecy. We have a sure word of prophecy. Meaning that what he said is going to come to pass. Whereunto you do well, that he what? Take heed. That's what I'm preaching to you now for you to take heed. As unto a what? Light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day star. Or sorry, until... The day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Listen to what he tells you here. You got to take heed to prophecy. See that? You got to believe what God said to the point where it possesses you. Are you understand what I'm saying? To the point where you stand up with it like a light. And Jesus Christ, what? Shining now through you. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Give the Lord glory, somebody. Give the Lord glory, somebody. So somebody got to see Jesus, what? Shining through you. It doesn't matter if they reject it, but they will identify your behavior with Jesus. Glory to God, somebody. So listen what he tells you now. The first thing you must recognize If you're going to stand firmly in the truth, the present truth that he said, the first thing you must recognize, you must know that no prophecy of scripture is of any interpretation. What does that mean? It means the Bible interprets itself. You can take one scripture to another scripture to another scripture dealing with the same matter. ultimate thing about it is that all of them will lead to death. 